Hello, today it's all about inhalational anesthetics and vaporizers, the conceptual understanding, working and logical calculations. Without wasting any more seconds, let's begin. The table you see in bottom screen will stay here throughout this video. By the end of video, you would have learned and understood these values in a better way. It has saturated vapor pressure, saturated vapor concentration, MAC values, and minimum alveolar partial pressures in vapor color coded designs. In order to understand vaporizers as anesthetists, you must understand the physics of vapors and laws governing the vaporizer function. So let's see that first. Number one, understanding pressure of gas inside a chamber and Dalton's law of partial pressures. Imagine a cylinder or chamber containing 100% oxygen at sea level pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury. The chamber has a small opening on top which communicates with inside. The oxygen particles striking against the walls of chamber exert what is called pressure. This pressure is dependent on number of gas molecules, not the size of molecules, right? So when it is 100% oxygen gas, the pressure exerted in total is same as ambient pressure which is sea level pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury and since it is 100% exerted by oxygen, so pressure of oxygen in this case is 760 into fraction of oxygen which is 1.0 so oxygen pressure in this case would be 760 millimeters of mercury this is the case of one gas pressure right what happens when there are mixture of gases in the chamber let's swap 100 percent oxygen in the same chamber with 100 percent air the air is mixture of gases with nitrogen 78 percent so blue colored nitrogen particles striking against the wall now remember that for partial pressures you can either see them in volume by volume concentration or as individual gas pressures in the mixture of gases, right? So we see volume by volume concentration of nitrogen would be 78%. If you convert to individual nitrogen pressure, we know total pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury at sea level. Since the pressure exerted depends on the number of particles, not the size. So 78% of the total 760 millimeters of mercury would be exerted by nitrogen right so 760 into 0.78 is 592 millimeters of mercury let's see oxygen pressure in air mixture when oxygen was 100 percent it exerted 760 millimeters of mercury pressure right but in air it is 21 percent so 760 into 0.21 is 160 millimeters of mercury so now oxygen pressure has dropped in this air chamber to 160 millimeters of mercury the remaining gases in air mixture account for 1% composition only. So their pressure is 760 into 0 0.01, so 7.6 millimeters of mercury. This is called the Dalton's law of partial pressures, meaning that the total pressure exerted by mixture of gases is equal to the sum of individual gas pressures. So in this case, blue 592 millimeters of mercury of nitrogen plus green 160 millimeters of mercury of oxygen and black 7.6 millimeters of mercury of miscellaneous 1% gases in air makes the total pressure exerted of 760 millimeters of mercury. Understood? Again, the point to remember, you are either seeing the vapor or gas in a mixture as its volume by volume concentration, which you show in percentage form, or you can see its definite value as partial pressure being exerted in millimeters of mercury. Remember the concentration or volume by volume form is relative term, right? But the individual pressure is quite a definite absolute term. I am telling you this because this concept will help you understand the difference between MAC values and mean alveolar partial pressure values. The next principal law to understand is evaporation and saturated vapor pressure. If we fill the chamber now with sevoflurane liquid, the molecules of sevoflurane in liquid possess kinetic energy. At air fluid interface, this kinetic energy becomes strong enough for the molecules to overcome the liquid forces and escape as vapors into the air. But this process requires energy which is taken from the remaining fluid. So vapor formation results in drop of temperature of remaining fluid. Just like when sweat vaporizes off our skin surface, the process of vaporization pulls away heat and energy from skin to develop enough energy to vaporize. This is why our skin gets colder after the sweat vaporizes, right? If I apply heat to the liquid, the heat energy will increase the kinetic energies of liquid molecules, which will overcome the intermolecular forces. So more vapor will form. 
this vapor molecules striking against the walls will exert the pressure which is called vapor pressure so the vapor pressure is really dependent on how much heat you are giving to the liquid right if i keep the chamber at constant 20 degrees celsius the vapors would initially increase but an equilibrium will be reached where the molecules going up as vapors and the molecules falling back as liquid become constant this is the point of equilibrium at that specific temperature where vapor achieves its saturation in a limited space given inside the chamber right so the pressure exerted by vapor at this point at this specific temperature is called saturated vapor pressure so saturated vapor pressure is really a function of temperature increasing the temperature increases the number of vapor molecules and in short increases the saturated vapor pressure right also remember that the saturated vapor pressure is surface interface property it is not dependent on atmospheric pressures so let's place co now in the first chamber with oxygen at 20 degrees celsius it would generate the saturated vapor pressure of 160 mm of mercury in terms of dalton's law now the partial pressure of co is 160 so volume by volume concentration would be 160 divided by 760 which is 21% so if co vapor is exerting 21% pressure then the remaining pressure is being exerted by 100% oxygen which should be around 79% right so in terms of partial pressure the pressure of oxygen would be 760 multiplied by 0.79 which is the fraction so 600 mm of mercury would be oxygen pressure so you see how 600 plus 160 of co so the total pressure at sea level exerted by co and oxygen mixture is 760 mm of mercury right which is actually the same pressure as the ambient one the third concept is about mac values and mean alveolar partial pressures you can see the values of inhalationals in the table but really the difference is same as we said earlier that you could either see the gas in volume by volume percentage or as a true partial pressure in millimeters of mercury so mac or minimum alveolar concentration is the volume by volume percentage or concentration of inhalational in alveoli that helps prevent movement to surgical stimulus in 50% of population right this mac is more related to the concentration dial of vapor so vapor dial is calibrated in terms of concentration of particular inhalational in the volume percentage right so 1.9% would mean 1.9% of sevoflurane in total fresh gas flow reaching the alveolus this is where sometimes it gets confusing for new anesthesia residents like one mac value of sevoflurane would mean 1.9% so i would place the vapor dial at 1.9% to deliver one mac if i want to deliver 1.5 mac of sevoflurane it doesn't mean i place the vapor dial at 1.5% it means i multiply 1.5 into 1.9 which is the mac value so 1.9 being the mac value of sevo so 2.85% so i put the dial at 2.85% to deliver 1.5 mac value right now awake mac is 0.3 times the mac value so sevo fluorine it would be 0.3 into 1.9 so at alveolar concentration of 0.57% patient will awake 1.3 mac is where 95% of the patients will not move to the stimulus So to give 1.3 mac I'll apply 1.3 into 1.9% which is 2.47%. So I set the dial at 2.47% to ensure 95% probability that the patient will not move, right? So if minimum alveolar concentration of sevoflurane is 1.9, note that these mac values were made at sea levels, meaning total pressure of 760 mm of mercury. So in terms of partial pressures at alveoli for 1 mac value of sevoflurane 1.9% means 760 of sea level pressure multiplied by 0.019 which is 14.4 mm of mercury so to prevent movement in 50% of population to surgical stimulus you must ensure either that sevoflurane at alveolar level is 1.9% of total gas inflow or in terms of partial pressure is around 14.4 mm of mercury which is equal to 1 mac value of 1.9%. Now here in the picture I have set the vapor dial at 2.5%, right? 
in terms of mac value divide the 2.5% by 1.9% for sevoflurane i say sevoflurane again and again because this one mac value for other gases is different right as you can see in the table like for isoflurane it is 1.2% so 2.5% divided by 1.9% is 1.3 mac right 1 mac will prevent movement in 50% 1.3 mac will prevent it in 95% population so in terms of minimum alveolar partial pressures how much am i delivering now at sea level 760 into 2.5% so around 19 millimeters of mercury is the partial pressure of sevoflurane in alveoli at this vapor setting, right? Is this clear now? Now here's the kicker. We are talking these values of MAC and MAP at alveolar level. The actual true indication of depth is really about the partial pressures of inhalationals at the level of brain, right? So modern inhalationals take very less time to reach the equilibrium due to their blood gas partition coefficients so in equilibrium between alveoli blood and brain should mean alveolar partial pressures be more relevant because it reflects the partial pressures in the brain more closely than the mac values right because the mac values are all about concentration but the map minimum alveolar partial pressures are more aligned with the partial pressures of the brain but we are using MAC more because the vapor concentration dials are aligned to concentration or MAC values more, right? Another reason why minimum alveolar partial pressure is more accurate is coming up now. Let's see impact of altitude on MAC values and the MAP values. Between the height of 10,000 foot having ATM pressure of 502 millimeters of mercury and at sea level with 760 millimeters of mercury. We have already seen mixture of sevoflurane and 100% oxygen in which at 20 degrees Celsius, sevoflurane makes 21% of the total 760 millimeters mercury pressure at saturated vapor pressure, right? And 79% contribution by oxygen meant 760 into 0.79, so 600 millimeters of mercury partial pressure of oxygen. Now let's see how the same system behaves at 10,000 foot. Since we said saturated vapor pressure is temperature dependent, not pressure dependent it is basically the property of surface of liquid so saturated vapor pressure of sevoflurane would still be 160 millimeters of mercury at 20 degrees celsius right but the concentration volume by volume percentage will change now because the total pressure of atmosphere has reduced now to 502 so 160 divided by 502 31 percent now oxygen contribution to the total pressures would be 69 percent instead of 79 percent at sea levels this makes partial pressure of oxygen to be 502 multiplied by 0.69 so 346 millimeters of mercury a lot less than 600 millimeters of mercury at sea level partial pressures whereas sevoflurane saturated vapor pressure is constant of 160 millimeters of mercury so sevoflurane is now more concentrated from 21 percent at sea level to a new value of 31 percent now stay with me here so the mac which is volume by volume concentration will also change, right? The concentration of sevoflurane vapor has increased now. So more concentrated vapor will be present in the alveolus, right? Then the dial setting. Because the dial settings on the vapor dial, they are calibrated according to the sea levels. Suppose we are giving MAC concentration such that sevoflurane mean alveolar partial pressures are 12.9 at sea level, right? So at sea level, the concentration of sevo in total flow would be 12.9 millimeters of mercury divided by total 760 millimeters of mercury. So 1.7% on concentration dial. Now remember the MAC values are calculated for sea level. So if you set the concentration dial of vapor at 1.7% at 10,000 feet, the saturated vapor pressure would be the same, but the barometric pressure has reduced to 502. So now the actual concentration being delivered would be 12.9, same, divided by 502. So it becomes 2.4%. So you are setting the concentration of vapor at 1.7%, but the actual vapor being delivered to the patient is 2.4%. So that's one limitation of MAC because MAC is set against sea levels, not high altitude. But mean alveolar partial pressure, which is true reflection of the partial pressures in brain at equilibrium, these mean alveolar values will stay constant or very close to constant. Here's how. 
Suppose we set concentration dial on sevoflurane vaporizer at 1.9% at sea level, which is 1 mac, right? So the pressure exerted by the vapor in alveolus would be 1.9% of the total pressure as per Dalton's law. So 760 multiplied by 0 0.019 equals 14.4 millimeters of mercury, right? Let's suppose we set the dial at 1.9% at height now. Now, we said since the saturated vapor pressure stays same irrespective of height, but the total barometric pressure is now lower, so vapor is more concentrated. Let's say the concentration has increased now to 2.9%. So 502 multiplied by 0 0.029 equals 14.4. Since mean alveolar partial pressure of sevoflurane is reflective of brain's partial pressure. So you see, even if altitude is there, the true pressure of vapor in brain changes very little. The concentration of vapor may increase, but the pressure of the same vapor stays same due to reduced barometric pressures. Lastly, the concept of boiling points. Boiling point by definition is the point where saturated vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. Boiling point of sevoflurane is 58 degrees Celsius. Suppose now we heat the chamber up and it reaches 58 degrees Celsius. Then all sevoflurane liquid would vaporize and the pressure exerted on the walls by the vapor molecules would be 760 millimeters of mercury. In other words, there would be 100% sevoflurane vaporizer making the total pressure. No carrier gas there, right? The boiling point is dependent upon atmospheric pressures. So it is naturally affected by height. Like at 10,000 foot, the atmospheric pressure was 502 millimeters of mercury. So the boiling point would reach early there. The boiling point for most inhalationals at sea level falls between 40 to 60 degrees Celsius, which is well above the usual OT temperature settings, right? Except for desflurane, which has a boiling point of 22.8 degrees Celsius. So you see now why at 20 degrees Celsius, desflurane saturated vapor pressure is reaching 669 millimeters of mercury which is very close to 760 millimeters of mercury so desflurane would make 88 percent of the total pressures in the chamber if now the chamber pressure reaches 22.8 degrees celsius from 20 desflurane would reach its boiling point and then the saturated vapor pressure would reach atmospheric level of 760 millimeters of mercury making 100 percent chamber filled only with desflurane vapor so imagine how much overdose of desflurane would go into the patient then. This is why desflurane is contained in special vaporizers, which we will touch in subsequent episodes. I wanted to add types of vaporizers and variable bypass vaporizers to the same episode, but I think we have already covered a lot of concept. Retain this concept clearly to understand now the working of vaporizers, which is coming up next. If there are any questions, write them down in the comment box. Do share and subscribe. It means a lot. Thank you and see you next time.